Hi Rohit, how are you? Hi, I'm Rajam. Good. How are you? Fine. Uh, so I have went through your uh, CV. All looks good. So uh, let us not waste uh, our time in like project and experience as I already went through it. So directly I'm jumping into like, uh, uh, like technical interviews. So, uh, uh, so have you like worked on uh, like doing a start process and a sub process? So um, like, uh, then like what's the difference between start process and sub process? Can you explain it? Yeah, so I worked on a start process and sub process. The start process uh, is basically the execution of the start process happen in a different engine. And uh, the sub process execute in the in same engine as, or as the main process the execution is happening. So, if you have configured in in a main process model, you have configured the start process. So, if you have any instance, um, already executed instance, if you open that uh, um, the main uh, process instance, main process model instance, then you can not you can you can not directly open the start process if you configure the start process. Uh, call the sub process start process. So you need to go to the monitoring and search the name directly. That then you can open it. But if you have configure in the main process as uh, uh, any uh, process is sub process, then you can directly open it from the main process itself. It's because the execution was happening in the same engine, and in the start process it's happening in different ways. So the faster by using a start process the execution will happen faster so because the execution happen in a balance engine okay so uh, like uh, is a start process runs uh, like a synchronous way or asynchronous way it's run asynchronously okay what about sub process sub process there are two type of sub process synchronous and asynchronous so um, in uh, uh, according to our requirement we can configure it accordingly so okay. uh, but it will execution will happen in the same way as the main process okay. is getting executed okay so have you worked on like um, uh, append functions yes i have worked on append fun function basically append a new structure or a value in the main array so for an example we can say that uh, in editable gate, we have add. Uh, we need to add new rows of uh, the data. So for filling the data, so we use the append function to add the same blank structure into the existing array. The array can be our record, CDT, whatever. In the local variables also, it depends. Okay. So have you worked on like records? Yes, I have worked. Like recent. Okay. So, uh, like the uh, nowadays, like uh, we have record sync. So, do you have any about uh, any idea about like what is record sync and how it works? Yeah. So, record sync we, um, is a option given in the record. When suppose you have already an existing table, and you are going to create a record. Uh, so, once you create a record but the, the data will not come directly. You need to do the full sync. So once you do the full sync, all the data which is uh, written into the table, it will directly get sync uh, with the APN uh, CASA memory. So by using sync option, whenever you query the record, you don't have to directly go into the table and face the data. You can directly uh, query it from the APN CASA memory and the execution will be fast, more faster. The, if, you, uh, uh, if you use query entity the, for getting the data from the table, by using record, uh, query record, it will, the execution will be more faster. And suppose, uh, you know, suppose in a main table, data is coming from like, any API is writing the data into the table. We need to um, do the sync um, records, uh, sync the record uh, over the night or depend upon the business requirement, we can sync the record. So that, um, uh, uh, th th that the data which is uh, there in the table, it will get uh, reflected in the memory. So 
cache memory of the appian and you can query it directly okay so have you worked on scheduler yes i have worked. Uh, can you explain like what is scheduler scheduler is a automated process which runs without human intervention it means like you can in the start node in in any of the process model you can configure uh, the start node to run at particular time or particular time or you can say that monthly hourly or how, whatever the business law requirement is there so it will run at that particular time so in a scheduler there should not be any it's a human inter interference in between that so that it will execution will happen so. okay so uh, in recent like uh, uh, recent like releases like we have portal in a picture in so have you worked in like uh, por portals yes i have worked okay so i have like only one question uh, regarding portal so how we can check errors occur in the portal? For checking the errors, I think we have a two log file. First is portal error log, where you can identify where and why the user is seeing that error in the portal. And other one is like portal detail.csv, uh, where you can check the performance breakdown. Okay, so uh, like what's what's the difference between like where where contains? Can you explain it with example? Yep. So where and where contains both return the index. So major difference is that in the where function you have an array where which has the true value. So whichever is true value, it will give you that index. And in the where content, you have two parameters, value and the array. So it will search for that value in the particular array and return to the index. Okay. So uh, like, uh, do you have any idea like what is AI scale in recent like features we have uh, AI also in a picture. So what is AI skill and uh, types of AI skill? Yeah, we have, yes, uh, I have worked on the AI skill. So AI skill is basically a artificial intelligence model, which we train them by using APN. So there are three kinds of AI skills. One is document classification, other one is document extraction, and another is email classification. So document uh, classification is uh, you can classify the document depending upon the per te their template. So which template, which PDF you have received from the client, you can directly dec uh, decide which is there. So that is the document classification. You can do it. And um, in the document extraction, you can extract the data, uh, data uh, which is uh, given by the client document so that if they, they have uploaded any PDF document, uh, so you can extract the data which is there in the PDF. And the email classification is nothing but it will characterize your email uh, depending upon the subject lines and how it has been uh, the how it has been configured. You can distribute characterize the email and distribute with, uh, between the your resources or how you can do it. It is all. Okay, like uh, how many rows of data uh, can we sync at a time in a record? According to the latest list, we can sync up to four million record of uh, rows of data in a record. Okay, so as per the best practices in a process model, how many uh, like nodes are allowed to be configured? So, as per the best practices. As for the base practices, we can configure up to 30 nodes. If we have more than 30 nodes, there, there, there can be the higher memory consumption issue in the process model. So, okay. you know, so um, it is suggestible to have a, uh, if you are go exceeding 30 nodes, to break the main process into this uh, smaller sub process. Okay. So, what is activity chaining and where uh, we used to use it? 
activity chaining is nothing but it uh, you can uh, you can uh, connect two nodes by using the activity chaining so activity suppose you have multiple user input tasks in a interface and in between that you have smaller smaller sub process configure into that so you, you don't want to break the breakage in the flow one form is open the next form should be open for you directly there should not be any breakage so to configure the connection so without any breakage we have to do the activity chaining between all the nodes coming in that power flow okay one last question uh, i'll not take much time so what is decision table have you worked on it yeah i have worked so decision table is nothing but we can decide we can take a decision uh, on the input which you are going to give suppose we already decide the structure if this is the input this will be the output there can be multiple inputs and multiple output also so depending upon input you, what if it is having a true condition or the text value comparison anything we can decide what output it can be so we can configure the in the output it can be the running the process model or taking any decision of giving the output so it all depends suppose you have like uh, um, the client want to send an email to this particular user something like that you can configure the email also in the output body um, that's how it works it's not basically works as a decision making yeah okay so uh, rohit like i'm done with like my questions so do you have any questions from no, your end not, okay yeah. Thank you. So I'll update. Yeah, thank you. So I'll update my feedback to HR, and HR will contact you. And uh, it was uh, like nice talking to you. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye.